Looking for a new controller? Want to find out if the Astro C40 is the right controller for you? Well, in today's review, we're going to take a look at the pros, the cons, and if you should definitely consider picking up a Astro C40. And of course, what you guys definitely want to know if it gets the laser bolt approval. Asava, this is Lagebolt and welcome to our review of the Astro C40. For those of you who might not be up to date, Astro released the C40 a couple months ago and it was very interesting to see Astro as a company come out with a controller module as the majority of us have grown accustomed to them being very keen when it comes to their audio peripherals. But we were excited once we heard the announcement and I was extremely glad when we received our review unit for the Astro C40. After testing this unit out for a couple of weeks now, playing not only on the PC and on the PlayStation 4, I wanted to give you guys my honest review and what I actually thought about the controller and of course answer the question if you guys should definitely consider picking one up. At first glance, when we take a look at the controller, you might look at it and say, what is the difference between this controller and any other controller that I might have an option to purchase? Well guys, I am glad to let you guys know that this controller has a very good feature that you won't find in any other controller. But before we talk about that feature, let's take a look at the ergonomics of the controller. Ergonomically, the controller is very well built. In addition to that, guys, the controller might feel a little bit different if you come from using a standard PlayStation controller like the DualShock. If you are more familiar with other types of controllers like the Xbox One controller, or any other like PC peripheral, then it might feel a little bit more friendly on your hands. Now, when I say that, it doesn't mean that it doesn't feel good. It just means that you might feel a difference if you come from playing your regular PlayStation controller. But trust me guys, once you get your hands on this controller, you won't want to go back to any other because as soon as this controller touches your hands, you could feel how well manufactured this controller is. What I love about the controller is the two different types of textures they went ahead and used the controller. On the front face of the controller, we have a nice smooth rubbery texture that suits very well on the palm of your hands and wrapping around the controller, we have a nice addition of change of texture that gives you that rubbery feel and gives you that texture of a grip to avoid any sort of slippage. Now let's dive in and talk about all the amazing features that the controller has and what you could expect when purchasing this controller. Let's start off of course with one of the most important things of the controller is the addition of the bottom pads on the bottom allowing you to put different sorts of inputs into the bottom pads than you would on your regular standard controller. What this allows you to do is that when you're playing FPS games or you're playing any other game that will require for you to move your thumb from the joystick to press another button, you're able to map that button into any of the bottom pads to avoid that delay of input. In addition to that, there is a button right between the pads that allows you to easily map any button to the specific pad that you choose. Another neat feature of the controller is the fact that you don't have to worry about having to buy any additional items like for example trigger stoppers because the controller already comes with a inbuilt trigger stopper that allows you to have faster input when pressing down the trigger. So if you want to have an advantage when playing FPS or battle royales, then you're definitely going to want to consider this controller. Now this controller you're able to use not only with the PlayStation 4, but you're also able to use it with your PC. An advantage that the controller gives you is that it allows you to use the controller wirelessly and it also allows you to use the controller wire because the controller comes with both options when you purchase it. Wirelessly, you're going to definitely have to plug in a dunkalo to your PlayStation 4 to be able to operate it wirelessly. Now, if you would like to operate the controller wire, you're also able to have that option as well. If you are already familiar with the PlayStation 4 controller, it also comes with the majority of the features that your regular PlayStation 4 controller comes. It comes with the touchpad in the right dev in the middle. It comes with the inbuilt speakers. So if you want to have the game audio come out through the controller, you're able to do that if the game allows you to. And it also comes with a 3.5 millimeter jack right between the controller. Now I know you might be saying, Laser, those are all options that you probably could get in another controller. What is that thing that makes this controller stand out out of any other controller out in the market? Well, what makes this controller stand out is the fact that this is the first modular controller. Now, if you don't know what modular means, 
Modular gives you the advantage of buying something and being able to move pieces around. You are not able to do that with any other controller in the market. So what I mean by this is, for example, if I want to go ahead and take my joystick and move it to the top and simulate an Xbox One controller, I'm able to do that on the fly. All I have to do is open up the plate, take out the left stick, place it on the top, and bring the D-pad down to the position where I'm used to using my Xbox One controller, and boom bada bing, I already have an Xbox One controller. If I'm used to the way the keys are organized within the PlayStation 4, I'm able to move that modular back into the controller and easily place that joystick so it can feel very comfortable if I'm a PlayStation 4 user. Snapping these modules back in place is very easy. They're also already marked so you know where to place them without having any mistake or any problem. Removing the case to actually perform this is actually pretty easy. All you do is remove four screws, take off the plate, and change the modules around. This is what makes this controller stand out of all the other controllers. You're not able to do that with any other controller except this one. Now there is one more feature that is not so much exclusive to this controller. There are other controllers that have these features, but not all of them have it. I would say out of all the controllers that you're able to purchase customizable, this feature is only available in three controllers that I know that give you this option. And that is using the software on your PC, allowing you to adjust the controller to your liking. If you want to reduce how much input you have for each button, if you want to change different sorts of profiles for the controller, if you want to adjust the sensitivity of the joysticks, the software allows you to do that. And it's a very nice feature to have because it allows you to play with different profiles to get better suited not only with the controller, but to make your experience a lot better when using a controller. Now, those are all the amazing features that the controller comes with, but what are the negatives of the controller? Because so far, it sounds like a very perfect controller. Well, one of the negative things I have with the controller is that this controller is technically marketed for the PlayStation 4. You could see right on the box, it says PlayStation 4. And my issue that I have with it being marketed to the PlayStation 4 is that the fact that it has two little downsides when when using it with the PlayStation 4. Number one is that if you want to turn on your PlayStation 4 with the controller itself, like you're able to do with the DualShock, you're not able to do that. You actually have to get up and turn on your PlayStation 4 and then turn on your controller, which is something that really doesn't make sense. And I do hope they fix it with the firmware update or they fix it with the next revision of controller. Another feature that seems pretty odd to me since it's a part of marketed as a PlayStation 4 controller is that you have to use a dongle to use it wirelessly. It doesn't really make sense why they couldn't use the technology of other controllers that are able to operate wirelessly without a dongle on the PlayStation 4. Another thing I did notice with the controller is that sometimes you will get stick drift. Uh, if you don't know what stick drift is, is when you place down your controller and you notice that your stick is moving or you notice on the screen that your cursor or anything is being moved without you touching the controller, that is strict. But this is actually pretty easy to correct. All you have to do is reboot the controller and the stick drift will automatically dissipate and you won't have to worry about that issue. So that's something that's easily fixed. One more downside that I have that with the controller that kind of makes me a little bit sad and a little bit worrisome is the fact that the warranty for the controller is only six months. Now, I would understand a six month warranty for something that doesn't really get used that often, but for something that you're using every single day and you're putting it up and picking it up, putting it down, picking it up, you're moving the sticks, you're pressing the buttons, sometimes you're pressing the buttons more harder than you usually would, then six month warranty, I think it's a very hard to give. I believe at least a one year warranty on this controller would have been amazing and wouldn't even allow me to think of this being such a negative aspect. Now, I know the biggest question that you have is laser. Does this controller get the laser bolts approval? Well, it's going to be a yes and a no. So the reason I want to put this in a yes and no perspective is because if you are on a PlayStation 4 and you're getting this controller only strictly because you're only going to be playing on the PlayStation 4. Yes, the controller has a lot of good features, but it does have a little bit of a downside if you're just a PlayStation 4 user. Now, if these features were to be corrected in the future models, I do believe that this controller would definitely be worth picking up. Now, if you plan on picking up this controller because not only are you going to be using it on the PC, but you also will be using it on the PlayStation 4, or if this is only going to be your main PC controller and you're trying to make the move from console to PC, 
then I would highly recommend you pick up this controller. With the new launch of Stadia coming out and with the integration of multiple games going cross platform, then you're definitely going to want to have an item that will not hinder you but will assist you in not worrying about, oh, I have to go to keyboard or I have to go to controller back and forth, you have one controller that will move across both platforms. If you guys are familiar with the way we do reviews here on the channel, we always rate the product based on the price and if it's worth you spending your hard earned money on that item. With all the key features that the controller comes with, with the 12 hour battery life, with the inclusion of a travel case in case you want to go somewhere else, with the addition of them allowing you to play wireless or wired, and with the modular aspect of the controller, I would highly recommend this controller if you are going to be playing both on PC and on PlayStation 4. The build quality is amazing and overall it's a wonderful product to definitely have in your inventory. If you guys would like to stay up to date to everything gaming, make sure you guys keep it locked on this channel and I will catch you guys on the next review.